I've been out of my head Can't get out of bed Too much on my brain But got it good Can't complain It's like I'm losing my mind And time's hard to find What's a girl gotta do To catch a break up When life tries to test me on today you will hear some traffic noise i am standing outside of acapella books so that is their new book section and this is their used book section but you use that door over there i filmed a sort of intro clip for the vlog but once again forgot to turn the sound back on i have found quite a haul now two of these books are for dad i got them for him you know early father's day present yeah i know it's not till june but I am really excited. It was really fun to just go in there and look around and get things that I wouldn't necessarily have thought of before. So we shall see. Hopefully they're all really good and we'll probably be heading out to another bookstore and supper somewhere as well. So we are near the vent line. There's a lot of ambient noise, but we're eating at an Indian restaurant. We just got our potatoes. Dad, Hello. ready to dig in. So, I'm hungry too. I don't care what you say. And I'm ignoring my phone, so don't try to reach me. I can't do nothing for you, so don't ask, I ain't coming through. Cause I'm running away to my own world, that's where I'm. made it back home and am filming this haul a, a second time because once again I forgot to put the sound back on. I had this thought because I had all that b-roll footage at the at the various bookstores that I needed to make sure to put the sound back on. Thought I double checked but I didn't. So filming it again. Yay! <laughs> that's my that's me. So we finished off today with a visit as you see a little bit of the b-roll at the National Center for Civil and Human Rights, which is a fairly new museum, although older than I thought. Uh, it was opened in 2014, and the last bit of haul is actually this shirt. So I got it, and I wasn't in, wasn't planning on getting a shirt, but I am just thrilled to have it. 
and I got it in the women's cut which was in this in blue I like the other color better but my dad got that one I had the opportunity to go to three different bookstores and there they were all different types the first of which was a very very niche independent bookstore when you think independent bookstore this is what you think it's in a you it used to be a house and you still see all the like the various rooms and things it had new books it had old books very limited selection but a really highly curated selection super thrilled to see all of those and then we went to one that is uh an independent bookstore but it's a what a described online as a mini chain out of new york city and then we went to a very large chain we start off with acapella books i was thinking about getting a reusable bag but acapella books did not so i'll hold on to this just to use but not as a reusable probably used once and so at acapella books i got a couple books for my dad and i'll show you those first so he also got a couple there but he did not have the kind of budget that i did i'll, I'll say this I have not totaled how much I, I spent and my credit card's going, stop using me, but I'm taking it out of my travel budget and not my book budget. The books that I got for him, one is called Think Again by Adam Grant. And this author seems familiar. And we were talking about that at the register, but I can't remember what I have heard or seen from him before and then we have a historical fiction i thought it was fantasy so maybe it's magical realism not sure but that is beasts of a little land and that is around the time set around the time of the korean independence movement around 1917 i don't know anything about it but he was really intrigued by it he got two other books and so he really wanted those I'm like okay ha happy father's day even though it's in june and it's march and then that leads me to my books so that i got from acapella books so acapella books has new books and used books i did get one used book but most of them were new but the one used book that i got i got just because of my personal fondness and that is a book on hilton head a sea island chronicle i love hilton head i don't know anything about the quality of this book but the fact that i was in atlanta and found a book on hilton head i had to get it the next two are fiction books so most of the books that i got at acapella books were non-fiction but i did get two fiction books so the first of those we have is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. I have heard a lot of really good things about Butler, although it will probably take a little while before I get into Butler's works, but I've heard that this is a really good one and it combines historical fiction with a bit of speculative and time travel with sci-fi, where the main character is set in the present day, at least at the time it was written in the 1970s, and she keeps getting pulled back into slavery times, I believe early 1800s. Every time she gets pulled back, there's this one particular other boy who is in danger and it's almost like she's getting pulled back to save him but that's all i know about this so i'm intrigued definitely intrigued about this and it comes very highly recommended and the other fiction book that i have is house on the cerulean sea i've heard really good things about this heartwarming fantasy i knew that this would probably be something that i would appreciate i do know about the I hesitate to use the word controversy, but the stuff going on with TJ Klune and where he's saying that he got his inspiration from, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Then the other books that I got, I got four more at Acapella Books, and those are all nonfiction. So the first of those is like a coffee table book, and it's called A Better Life for Their Children, and it's about the Rosenwald schools. I don't know anything about the Rosenwald schools, but my senior history paper was on the progressive school movement in the Parker School District here in where I live. I was really intrigued by this book and the setup of it. So it's Julius Rosenwald, Booker T. Washington, and the 4,978 schools that changed America. And it has a foreword by Don Lewis. So I'm re really intrigued to see what I find in there because it strikes me as it might be, I might have been part of the progressive school movement, but the thing combining education and the photographs and history intrigued about this one I hadn't heard of it before but really excited to read it and the next one i have heard a lot before and figured that i would probably want to own it because it would probably be something that i would want to annotate i've discovered that i really enjoy uh really feel the need to annotate more books and there's a car horn honking somewhere i don't know if you can hear that that is empire of pain by patrick redden keith i think i've read one other book by him but this is 
a history of the Sackler family and what they did basically to start the opioid crisis. I've heard a lot of good things about the book and I say that not that it's a good subject that he's talking about, but it's well written. It's, it's something that needs to come across. It will make you angry. I should stop saying that because I wouldn't have bought a book if I weren't hyped to read it or was hyped in the past to read it. One of the other cool things about acapella books is they have this section of signed at acapella books. Both of these books that I found were not in that section. I wasn't looking at it specifically for that. But when I opened the book up to see, it, to read a little bit about it, I saw a signed book plate. And the first of those is John Meacham. This was just published in 2020, so fairly recent. I have read other John Meacham works before. Uh, this is His Truth is Marching On, John Lewis and the Power of Hope. So I believe this was published fairly soon after John Lewis passed away. The stylizing of the cover, of course, I mean, a little bit of a cover buy for me. Then I love learning about this topic and then I opened it up and saw a signed book like. The last book that they purchased at Acapella Books was not one that I expected to pick up, but I was intrigued because I have such high respect for Anita Hill. And this is her book, Believing our 30 year journey to end gender violence. So if you're unfamiliar with Anita Hill and why she is so well known, it is because of her testimony against sitting justice Clarence Thomas and what he did when she was a clerk in his office or worked with him. I was too young to know the details of what was going on. I was really intrigued by that premise and so I opened it up, signed book plate by Anita Hill. That was my first haul. From there, we went a little bit, about 15 minutes away, but it was just 15 minutes because it was like driving through city areas. And it was really cool to see. I've never seen that part of Atlanta before. And I think it's close to what's called the High Line. And so like you could go up and walk across. We did not do that. I did not bring a jacket with me. I wasn't necessarily prepared, but it's the South in spring-ish time. So who knows what you get. It was a little chilly, but not terrible. So we didn't entertain that but it has this whole big shopping center there with food court the coolest food court that we've ever seen so we ate in an indian place and then we went to two different no three different sweets places one was like a french patisserie and we got some really cool stuff there and then another one was so dad went and it was like a crepe shop but they made cakes from layers of crepes and he got a matcha version and matcha is not my favorite flavor, but it's just, it's a really intriguing texture it's because you've got the layers in there and this the, like the, like a liquid or whatever that goes, not liquid, but it's not as thick as a cheesecake, which is what it looks like. And then I also got some gelato and then we went over to the reason that we went to this area and that is Posman's books. And that is so because I bought so much, got a nice reusable bag. But that's Posman Books. So they are a bit of a chain, but they're a very small chain and the store was very small. It had more of an independent bookstore feel. So that's, this is the in-between one. So first off, I did get a book as a gift. I saw this and I'm like, I have to get it for my stepdad because he's an avid cyclist. And that is Cyclopedia, 90 years of modern bicycle design. I was thinking I'd give it to him for Father's Day or his birthday, but I'm just probably going to go ahead and give them give it to him instead of waiting which is why i'm holding it up here and then a lot of the books most of the books actually that i got at posman books are books that i've already read before or wanted to add to my collection first off we have the hogwarts library version of tales of beetle the bard i realized that the version that i had was not this specific printing the wizarding trunk in their boxes their regular boxes they're releasing cut new covers so you can make magical books out of it designed by wizardry workshop and when i went to put one on this now i could have put it on any of them but when i went to put it on my version of tales of beetle the bard it didn't fit because it wasn't the right dimensions and so i got this one specifically so i can put a cool new cover on it this one i have not read before so this is one of the few books that i got at positive books that i have not read before and that is the color of law but i've heard really good things about it it is it's talking about how the laws have segregated america and i think it focuses primarily on like real estate law and redlining but it probably gets into more than that but i have been intrigued since i first heard about this 
and it's been really high on my nonfiction TBR and I just haven't gotten around to it. This was seeing it here and buying all the books basically was the kick I needed to actually go ahead and buy this and maybe read it next month. Who knows? The next book I got is How to Hide an Empire and I did read this earlier in audio form earlier this year and wanted a physical copy of it. I love how floppy it is. If I get a paperback it has to be nice and floppy. I don't know if I will reread this anytime soon but it, if I do I like I wanted to own a copy of it first and foremost but I have discovered with nonfiction books that I like annotating them and so I wanted a physical copy for that. Next I have Fountains of Silence. I mentioned I just finished Las Fuentes de Silencio the Spanish version and that I wasn't going to give a full review until I had it in English and as soon as I saw this I'm like yep yep gotta get this. So I knew I wanted the English version and I wanted to read it and really study the characters and all of those things. R Ruta Cepetti's is almost an auto buy author for me now. Next I have a book that I haven't read yet but I have the first book in the duology The Wrath and the Dawn and that is The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier and The Wrath and the Dawn is a retelling of Scheherazade and A Thousand and One Arabian Nights and so The Rose and the Dagger mm. So The Rose and the Dagger finishes the duology. I did not know it was a duology until I recently and like I loved Wrath and the Dawn so much I really need to finish off the duology. I believe all of the other books on here I have read before. So we start off with Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I read this just recently for the Goodreads Choice Awards. I think I like the UK versions better however not an enough better to hold off and try to find the UK covers although if whichever one it was Illumicrate, Fairy Loot, if they come up if they have the sequel in their box and I get it and it doesn't match I'm gonna be really ticked off anyway because those are both British bookish box companies but I wanted Six Crimson Cranes I really enjoyed it. Next we have the Magnus Chase series all three of them I just read the second and third recently really enjoyed it a whole lot more than I thought so these add to my Uncle Rick collection so we got that and then literally the morning of my long run and then going down to Atlanta I finished Crooked Kingdom. I liked it just a little bit less than Six of Crows. I have not compiled it yet probably it will be around a 4.5 but I definitely liked it a whole lot better than Rule of Wolves. I did like King of Scars so it's kind of funny I now need to go back and read the original Grishaverse trilogy. I read them really out of order. I read Six of Crows and then King of Scars, Rule of Wolves and now Kirk of Kingdom and then I'll go back to the trilogy. And then when I saw these I went I have to get this because one of my favorite books of all times is Lord of the Rings. I love everything about Middle Earth. I read it in middle school and fell in love with it in middle school. That's the kind of nerd that I am and I've read it multiple times since then and I've wanted really to I wanted really to collect everything in that whole everything that he translated everything that he wrote concerning this and his son Christopher Tolkien really after his father died went through all of his papers and was really dedicated to preserving his father's legacy and putting these works out. One of the four that I got that I have is one of those translations and that is Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Tolkien was a master of languages. I have Beowulf in hardcover translated by him and now I have the second of his translations and then the others are all related to stories from the second age which I'm nervous about the Amazon show coming out but maybe if I read these it'll get me back in the mindset of the second age and hopefully that'll be more on the side of the original trilogy of movies and not The Hobbit. So we have The Children of Hurin, Baron and Luthien and The Fall of Gondolin. And so that is my Pausman Books book haul. So now we come to the doozy of the book haul. I probably spent about the same at Pausman Books as Barnes & Noble. All three types. Now we've got the big big chain store. At least I didn't go to Amazon. So I knew that there was it's Atlanta. It's a big city. There's got to be a two-story Barnes & Noble and for some reason I, I wanted to go to a two-story Barnes & Noble all of those books abounding it just it's it's my happy place and I also wanted to look at their Harry Potter section and their Funko Pop section. I didn't see anything in the Harry Potter section that I wanted enough to get although I did see an art book about the art of the Crimes of Grindelwald which I almost bought that and I saw that was $60. So I'm like I'm spending a lot but not that much. But I did find one Funko Pop and that is Albus Dumbledore. 
So this is Young Albus from The Fantastic Beasts from Crimes of Grindelwald. I have a feeling that there will be more merch coming out soon with the release of The Secrets of Dumbledore. But so this adds to my Harry Potter Funko Pop collection. And then because I spent so much while I was there, I ended up with a membership, but only because it was free and I saved money. It, <clears throat> because I think you get 20% off on your first purchase. We shall see if I keep it. I probably won't. At least I save money on this purchase. So the first of the books that I'm going to show you is actually the last one I picked up. As you've seen in my bookshelf tour, all nearly all of my classics are the Barnes & Noble versions. Either the gorgeous hardcover ones with one leather bound or the paperback editions. I like unanimity. I like that design. And so I did obviously take a look at their collection over there to see if there was anything that I needed to add. And I found the Federalist Papers in a leather bound edition. I wish it was the hardcover, but I like the leather bound edition as well. And basically the edition that I have is mass market paperback and it's not in good condition. I think I bought it originally used. So now I have the Federalist Papers, a collection of essays written in favor of the new constitution. So this is just, it, it's, it's a gorgeous design. I really like it. Second to last, I'm kind of going in backwards order of when I got them, but that order gets mixed up, but it's just how I organized my stack over here. And I had got two middle grades books. One I read before recently as an arc and the other one I read the first book in the series. They're sort of companion novels a while ago and I've heard really good things about. So the book that I read as an arc, although after it was published, is Solomar by Pam Munoz Ryan. I loved the book, but of course, this cover, this is definitely a cover buy. It doesn't have a, a huge sign, but I love that the imprint of the butterfly and then there is a little bit of foiling but I definitely got it for the dust jacket cover. I mean, the whole thing, the whole thing is the picture. So I hadn't even looked at the back of it because I mean, I had an arc of it, but so I got Solomar for that reason. And then I got Omar Rising, which is a sequel because it comes after sequentially in time, but also more of a companion novel to Amal Unbound. And I really appreciated that. It is on the younger end of middle grade, but I thought it did a really good job. This picks up with a secondary character in Amal Unbound and then Amal herself becomes a secondary character in this and it's about the power of education for this boy, Amar. Omar, sorry. And so, and then the next three books that I have, I have not read before. They are young adult books. One of them is because the author is an autobi and two are close to autobis for me. And the first of which is another Root of Sepetis novel and that is Out of the Easy. And it is, it takes place in the French Quarter of New Orleans, but I don't know anything more than that. And I don't even know what time period it is, but I love Ruta Sepetti's take on different historical events. I almost bought her newest release, I Must Betray You. I don't know why I didn't, but I did it. So I'll get that, that one. I'll get that one eventually. The next one is from the Autobi author, Monica Hess, The War Outside. And this is the only one that I did not have yet. This one takes place at an internment camp where there's both Japanese internees and um, German and Italian internees. And I didn't realize that that had happened. I am really intrigued to get to this because I adore Monica Hess's writing. Like I said, she's an autobi author for me. And then lastly, we have All My Rage by Sapa Tahir. And Sapa Tahir is the author of the Ember and the Ashes series, one of my favorite YA fantasy series ever that I just read recently. And this is her newest release. This is a contemporary, but I've heard that it's hard hitting and it's powerful. It is powerful and I just, I cannot wait to start reading this one. So now we get to what made the book haul so um, big. And that is, as you all know, I've fallen down the Brandon Sanderson Cosmere hole and I have a few Brandon Sanderson books. Now I will say, I could have gotten all of the Skyward series books, except for the fact that I love the UK cover editions so much more that I am going to get those, unlike Six Crimson Cranes. I didn't get those and I did not get Mistborn Era 2 because they were all in mass market paperback. I do not like mass market paperbacks, especially for books that large. The spine gets so cracked and the book, it just loses quality. Not a huge fan. I did end up with quite a few. So first we have some novellas. We have Dawn Shard and we have Edge Dancer. So obviously I will read these in the order that I am supposed to, but I really do like these small hardcovers. I just, they're not going to fit with anything else, but I, I like it. 
I was almost sad that I couldn't get Elantris or Warbreaker because at least on the mass market paperback, but then I spotted one last floppy paperback copy of Elantris. I got all of the Stormlight Archive. That's what makes it so big. So we have the Way of Kings, but this is the kind of paperback that you need for a book this big. It is so floppy. It'll bend well. You won't have to crack the spine. This is what you need. Then we have book two, Words of Radiance. Book three, Oathbringer. This thing is massive. It's heavy. It's like 1200 something pages. Might be one of the biggest books that I've ever read by the time that I read it. And finally, the most recent one that's been published, and that is Rhythm of War. I bought 36 books. Two of those are for my dad. One of those was for my stepdad. So for me, I bought 33 books. We are not going to talk about how much it cost because I am going to own it. I love all of these books. I know that they were all good purchases. I'm 100% behind these books. Yay books. I don't know why I did that. I might cut it out. But I had a really good time this weekend. I loved getting to go down there, feeling like I was on vacation. It was only a little bit more than 24 hours. And I just, I really enjoyed it because it was books it was good food and it was history. So that's me in a nutshell. The only thing that was a little bit odd was, and I talked to my dad about this as we were going back to the hotel last night. And that was like, it feels so weird to travel for anything other than a race. I kept feeling like I would have a race this morning when I woke up because that's normally why I go to hotels is either that or field trips. This was unusual for me, but I'm, I had a really good time. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.